I would buy this just so I can take it apart easily. I think that's half the joy of this for me right now. All right, we're doing the Neo 80. Uh, this was sent over. Um, this is a sponsored review, but obviously it won't change anything because I've done stuff for QWERTY keys, you know, Owl Labs in the past, and you guys have seen I can be pretty unbiased with them. Um, so let's see what we get in the box. This does start at 140 American. I think it's like 186 Canadian converted, something like that. I actually don't know what we got in the box. I don't know what they sent over. So we got some stabs, which is nice to get. I like some stabilizers. Are these clip-ins? Oh yeah, they are clip-ins. I don't know what brand of clip-ins these are. Interesting. We got some clip-in stabs. Now I'm pretty positive they sent over a solderable PCB. Yeah, they did. So we got some foam. This I love. I need to see more of this in 2024. This pogo connector, the magnetic connector. God, bro. Let me tell you, this is an absolute godsend for keyboards who, you know when keyboards use <clears throat> ribbon cables for like everything? This is nice, I like that. So we got the uh, the PCB, some foam here. These are Neo clip-ins, I've never used them before. I did include a hot swap. Fuck, I don't know what I'm gonna use today. And then we got two different plates. You know what? Maybe we'll do two, board, two different builds. And we have an aluminum and what looks like a either a palm or a I guess it's palm plate. I don't think this is PC. And then we got a little, I'm guessing this is like a cable or accessories box. Yeah, just some accessories, a little screwdriver, keycap puller, USB cable. Standard fare, I think, with a lot of these boards nowadays, which is nice to have. It's, it's always a pleasant surprise to see these. It's good to get all the tools you need in the box. We have some feet. And then I might be referring to the build guide for this, by the way. It uh, looks like we have standoffs and an O-ring. So I know this is O-ring mounted, gasket mounted, plateless. There's tons of different mounts we can do for this. <clears throat> and the keyboard. I don't know if this is silver or white. It kind of looks like silver. Ooh, the copper weight. So I was reading into th this on their Notion and they did say that even though this has a clear coat on it, to handle it with care. That looks nice. If I end up really liking this board, guys, I think I might experiment in patina ing this. Cause this is actually a really clean aesthetic on the back. I quite like this. It's not shiny, it's just cause it has the plastic wrapper on it. Ooh, so that was another thing I'm kind of excited for this board. Um, I think the overall shape and aesthetic of this is very classic and I like it a lot. So. It has uh, thin bezels on the side, which I'm here for. You guys know I, I like that aesthetic a lot. I'm just gonna toss things to the side. Oh yeah, that is nice. Let me take out this foam here. Look how thin that bezel is. This reminds me a little bit of the Sunsetter. If you guys remember that keyboard, this little RGB orbit, sorry, I'm hiccuping. So that's kind of cool, I guess. Little RGB orbit. What is this? I guess I need to go in and screw that down or something. I'll take it apart anyways. Wow, there's a lot of interesting stuff to this board. Cool, and I'm pretty sure this is just the, oh man. This, this is like a huge contender. Oh, look at this. They even have like a little force break. Sorry. Was it the sunset or sunsetter? I can't remember which one's which. Little force break corners. You guys can see that too. Quite nice. Very, very cool. So tempted to buy right now. Yeah, so it starts at 140. I have to go, the only thing I didn't do today, by the way, I actually prepped myself a lot for this stream. I did not go through all the configurations. I think there is the stainless steel ones and the copper ones that increase the price. But I did not go and like, you know, poke around the configurator for hours on end. I did a few. Um, of the configurators, but it, I don't think, I think there's like a cap for how expensive this can get, obviously, uh, which isn't too, it isn't priced too crazy, so. Uh, it starts at 140 though. <clears throat> uh, I snagged one of those on launch day, excited for this build. I guess now the question is, do I wanna build with a plateless, or sorry, um, a solderable or hot swap? I think I'm gonna go solderable today and just, just like give this the best shot possible. Even if, even though I don't personally believe that solderable PCBs sound a whole lot different, 
I feel like we do hot swap for everything these days. And quite frankly, it's kind of nice to solder. It's relaxing. Platelet starts at 110. The most expensive is 190. Are you sure platelet starts at 110? Platelet, yeah, platelet does start at a cheaper price. Like I said, I didn't poke around too, too much with it. Oh, okay, that's nice. I didn't know they'd give you that option to just not order a plate. That is my mistake there. But yeah, <clears throat> very nice. What's the highest you can get, 190? I do like their stone washed weights. Wait, how did you get it to be that expensive? Plus 30 for shipping. Shipping's inevitable. I'm, I, I feel like I shouldn't have to say shipping, but I mean, stuff doesn't ship for free usually in the keyboard hobby. I think the ideal for me, like I think what I would, know, what I would go with personally is one of the anode ones here. If you really want to spray coat it one, go for it. But I'd probably go silver, copper, um, and then uh, maybe a different bottom case. So my, my ideal build would be, let's see, solder non-flex cut. My ideal build would be 140, which is the build that I'm doing today. Here are the gaskets, we have the O-ring. I don't know what I want to try today. I feel like there's so many different things I want to give a go, you know? Uh, Anno match on silver is usually pretty easy, I'd say, but it looks fine. I feel like for Anno match, I'd rather have like a different, like, you know, darker color to really tell there. Internals, there is like the slightest streaking on the inside. <clears throat> Again, I don't think I can visibly show you guys that on my cameras. The slightest, but again, I think this is under a very bright light. And I don't think you'll notice this on a regular basis. So that's, to me, that's a non-issue, but it doesn't, I don't see that at all on the outside coating at all. Uh, the side profile on this is quite nice, by the way. It's a very nice aesthetic. It also bows out a little bit too. So very, very, very pretty. Gorgeous. I'm actually not sure what the front height on this is. I have to double check. I don't really remember off the top of my head, but I can already tell you this is shaping up to be very good. It has a little ledge on the inside, which usually is indicative of a smaller front height. So very, very nice. This has a lot of features that I'm already very into, by the way. Uh, at a good price. Like I said, I think the ideal price point for me here is the 140 price point. Yeah, look, so if we look at mounting points, we have two mounting points over here and then four on the top, nothing underneath the space bar. So very, very good call from the, the team at Neo, or I, I don't know what higher up threshold this is. Very awesome call there. We're not gonna use foam today. And then I am gonna be using these switches, which I prepared. Yeah, and this is not to say it's bad design putting something over there, but I'd say typically when you put a mounting point under the space bar, not only does the space bar feel very stiff, like you can feel, even if it's well isolated, you still feel a lot of like thock or not thock. Or what, I don't even know the word for this. You just feel a lot of shock coming back into your hand, a lot of feedback. Feedback's the best word for this. Um, and it's not a fun typing experience, uh, at least for me. And also I noticed the sound profile um, when you get a mounting point underneath there too is a lot more flat. So I, I don't, I think it's quite uh, unpleasant personally. All right, let's put some switches in. Now, listen, I'm gonna forewarn you guys. These switches have different stem colors. If I don't put them in the right spots, please don't hate me. Okay. No one hate me. All right, let's open this guy. Catch ball system. So if you guys aren't aware what the catch ball system is, uh, these little, better view over here. Little balls put pressure on these little latches over here and it closes up quite nicely. And it's pretty strong too. So we got two over here on the top. There's two on each side and then we have three on the bottom. Interesting placements on the bottom here. I do like the addition of all these little force break materials. Very nice, very good addition here. So very awesome. I'm gonna take out the plate here because I don't know if this is supposed to be loose like that, but I just wanna see. I think we're missing one screw over here anyways. So, or not the plate, rather the weight. Uh, let's see, let's see what I can see underneath here. 
I'm just curious to see the daughter board, guys, in case you guys are wondering what the hell I'm doing. All right, so there's the weight. So in case you guys want to see how thick the weight was, it is not very, very thick, but I would say this still has some heft to it. So that is the thickness of the copper piece. Definitely still has some heft though. And then, ah, interesting. So this is where the batteries would go if you end up getting batteries. So it is replaced with some foam there. That's where the battery would stay. So that is nice. You get to hide all the, that stuff. And this just kind of floats around and I guess magnetically connects. Very, very interesting. Oh, he did a drop test and it came off. Ooh, that doesn't sound fun. Cool, let's put this all back together now. We're gonna start with O-ring, aren't we not? I think O-ring would be fun to start with. Starting off, uh, starting off with this little O-ring mount. So I'm guessing these little points here, one, two, three, and four, all these little points over here, that's where the O-rings kind of sit. Very, very interesting. Cool. Very interesting. Uh, is the daughter board connection magnetic? Yep. We just lay it in and it should. So if I plug it in now, let me make sure. Yep, it's working. I don't know, I mean, the RGB is kind of not the brightest thing in the world, but yeah, it's a magnetic. It's, I think it's called like a pogo connector is what they're calling it. So let's take a look at the visuals one more time of the board. Thin bezels, which I think are very, very pleasant. Um, the board itself has a really nice kind of curve outwards, which is really pretty. Seems like a pretty decent little front height for this too. Like it's not, it's not terribly tall. It's actually quite nice. I don't exactly know the front height of this build. I wish I knew. Noel was your last year build? There was no, I didn't even remember using the well last year. What do you guys think? Does, uh, does the set look good though? Ooh, there's a little bit of reverb happening. Ooh, this is looking nice though. It is looking good, I gotta admit. There's like a little bit of rattle and it's not from the, hear that? It's from the actual plate or something. So what is causing that? Let's see. Is something not sitting right? Pink space bar. Oh, yeah, sounds better now. Maybe I should have to reseat some stuff. All right, let's see what this sounds like. Nice alphas, yeah, very nice alphas. Again, this could be like the Neo 65 where there was like, you know, one very clear winner, at least for me. Yeah, there's a bit of reverb happening with the O-ring space bar here. And I wonder though, is it because there's no, is there a mounting point for the O-ring anywhere under here? Not really, eh? Not really. And let's see. Yeah, you know what it is too that might be happening? The plate contacts the side of the edge of the case ever so slightly right there. See that? So that could be causing a little bit of a problem. Just for this O-ring one. So let's see though, let's, let's put it all back together. We'll give it a little sound test. I mean, let's just see what it sounds like in O-Ring. We're gonna experiment with the other ones too. So let's see what this sounds like. Like the Alphas sound delicious, it's the space bar. The alphas are great. However, I know we're gonna try the other, the other ones really quickly here, but I'm curious to see if I can, see, no, it sounds fine without the top case on. 
Let's try some of the other mounting styles first. Yeah, maybe it could be like just the O-ring itself. Let's try some of the other mounting styles before we get too carried away with this. Dumbbell gaskets going in, as you guys can see. So let's put them all in now. I'm curious to see if it'll close with the O-ring as well. I, I just want to see what that looks sounds like. So we'll take it off. Just I just want to see both. That's it. Uh, I'm using uh, GMK Noel. All right, this is O-ring and dumbbell gasket. It still sounds weird. Let me see something. No, the wire is not contacting anything, so it's not the wire of the stabilizer. So I feel like we'd hear that more. So whatever the noise is, it sounds like something's impacting the plate. And I'm still curious. Well, that noise now is me. I'm telling you guys, it is 1000% not the space bar. And I'm telling you that because if we tap on the plate itself, the plate makes the same noise as the space bar. I think that fixed it. Okay, now I'm gonna take out the gaskets. So I just put a little, I don't know if you guys can even see. I put a little uh, piece of tape so the side of the PCB doesn't impact over here and here. It's not the gaskets. Let me take out the gaskets now, really quick. The space bar does sound a little empty. We can try a different space bar. <coughs> I can try the white, the white one, cursed spacebar, but it doesn't have that weird pinging noise now. So this is just back to, to O-ring itself. Nope, still there. So I wonder if the gaskets did more of the thing to fix it. Neo and gasket is the way, I think we have to go. No, it's still there. Let's just go gasket. I think I'm just hyper-focusing on the O-ring here. Doesn't seem like I can get the O-ring to a spot that I'm very happy with. All right, let's take out the O-ring. Let's put on the gasket sleeves. I thought the same thing about the Neo 65 though. I wasn't the biggest fan of the, uh, the O-ring mount. So this is just the gaskets now, like the, the longer strips of gaskets. I like this one here the best so far. I like this a lot, actually. Yeah, I don't think the O-ring works well on the Neos. That's so interesting how both O-ring mounts for the Neo 65. All right, well, I like these. I like the gaskets, both the dumbbells and the uh, jackets. These sound great. I really like how easy to assemble this board is. O-ring was a bit of a miss though, unfortunate. And then there's one other mounting style, right? That we should do. Uh, I did gasket on the Neo 65 and liked it so much and even try the O-ring. I don't think you're missing out. I don't think the O-ring, if I remember correctly, because I think I just got rid of the O-ring in my Neo 65. I don't think I liked it at all. All right, and let's try the last mounting style, which is those screw the pillars into the bottom of the case. So let's get these pillars. Sad to, uh, to hear that O-ring is a bust. I mean, I'm still gonna experiment it with it, by the way. Like, I'm still gonna like, see if I can find a way to make the O-ring not have that weird bottom. But so far, both gasket systems on this board seem pretty darn good. Uh, I think just like the Neo, this probably caters more towards a deeper sound signature. In case you guys were wondering, I don't think this is gonna be like, you know, for lack of a better word, we'll use some uh, sound words. 
I don't think this is gonna have that super clacky sound signature, even with the alu plate. Um, I like the Envoy a slight bit more because I prefer super high pitch clacky sound signatures. But I know some people preferred the Neo more because of the deeper sound signatures. So then what do I do now? I just lay it on top. So then I can put with a washer and without a washer. Do I have to put washers? Oh, this is cool. Ooh. You can place washers on top of the brass uh, cushioning. This will affect sound profile. So let's try no cushioning first. Did I even get some of those? Somewhere maybe. Wait, I think this might be my, my favorite one so far. These brass pillars are kind of... I kind of like this the most, guys. Yeah, it sounds like top mount-ish. I like this. Ooh, I actually like this a lot. Yeah, this sounds like more full compared to the... There is some resonance. We'll put a piece of bottom foam in just because I want to also see how that sounds with the bottom foam. There's a slight bit of resonance, but it's kind of fun. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Let's put a piece of foam in the bottom just to see what it sounds like. This is stimulating. Oh my goodness. I think this might be my favorite mounting style so far, however. Oh, I've got to put the PCB in first. Uh, I also want to point out that this is a joy to disassemble and try new things with. An absolute joy. Push in. I sort of like it without the foam more. I kind of like the resonance in it. I would buy this just so I can take it apart easily. I think that's half the joy of this for me right now. Like it, this is really entertaining to do. Now that I fixed the stab there in the corner. Damn. Okay, I really like this mount. This is so far the best mount on this board. The left shift is kind of empty sounding. I wonder why that is. There's like a few switches on the left end. Damn, this sounds really nice actually. Let's try the O-ring one more time. Maybe we can figure out what's causing the issue. Okay, I, I don't think O-ring is my favorite in this, but I really like all the other mounting styles. Oh, actually with foam, it's a little nicer. Okay, I like it with the foam. The O-ring with the foam is not bad. It kind of cuts some of that like weird metallic-y. Okay, I like this one with the foam. Okay, no, I think I think this might be one of the better ones too, if we combo the O-ring with the foam. But I still think the gasket, if you're looking for a no foam build, gasket and these brass posts are kind of it. I think the O-ring also has some of the better modifiers. And if you use the uh, foam, man, I, I do admit, I do think the, the O-ring sounds the nicest for its alphas. But I, I liked the gasket spacebar 
and as well as the uh, brass post spacebar a little bit more. So we can't unfortunately can't unfortunately win in all aspects here, but 140 for this, not bad. Not bad at all. I like it. There's a lot of stuff you can do with it. A lot of ways you can customize this. O-ring sounds empty. No, I think all the modifiers for all the, actually maybe not the brass post one. I think the left shift brass post was a little, the only awkward one, but how are the arrow keys? A little resonant with the O-ring build. Yeah, I think brass, brass post is number one for me. Gaskets number two. Uh, either one of the gaskets, so we'll say two and three, and then the O-ring is definitely like last place. Although, I like this O-ring with the bottom foam more than I think I liked the Neo 65 with the bottom foam. So, all right guys, take care, enjoy the rest of your day, and bye bye Spacebar.